How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to On The Ball and welcome back to more Premier League predictions for you guys. As you can see, I'm not here with Sim. He is still returning from his holiday in Los Angeles, but I'm here with Brian Daigle and we're going to, I'm still going to be giving you mine and Sim's predictions, but Brian is going to be chiming in with his predictions as well. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing good. Looking forward to this. Let's have some fun and uh, the weekend is here. Yeah, Premier League football is back. The international break is a distant memory. As you can see on the top hand side of the screen, it's 119 points to Sim, 111 points to me. It's time to reverse that this weekend with our uh, predictions. And the way the predictions work, the way the scoring works, it's five points for a completely correct scoreline, one point for a correct result. And at the end of the show, we both pick a star man. And once you pick that man, you cannot pick them again for the rest of the season. And it's five points for a goal, two points for an assist. And there's some big games to talk about this weekend. So let's start off talking about the Merseyside derby. Liverpool against Everton at Anfield. Sim has gone for 4-1 to Liverpool. I've gone for 3-0. I was actually even debating going for 2-0 as well. What are you going for, Brian? I'm going to go for 2-1 Liverpool. Ooh, you're going for a bit of a tighter game as well. And I was yeah. thinking that because I, I was looking at the previous score lines between Liverpool and Everton. And apart from the odd game here and there, it's rarely above like a 2 0, 2 1, something like that. Um, Everton just put everything on the line when it comes to this game. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool are obviously the more dominant side, especially at Anfield, where Everton rarely get a result. I think they've got one result in the past like 20 years or something like that, or 15 years or something crazy like that. But. With the trajectory that both these clubs are going on at the moment, I just can't really see Everton putting up a fight. Um, I, if Because it's at Anfield as well, I've gone for a more convincing scoreline. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a 2-1 or a 2-0 to Liverpool. But I have gone, I've, I've just sided with 3-0 just because I think it will be a, a bit of an onslaught. What are you thinking? Yeah, that's, uh, well, the way I look at it, I mean, I, I can remember... When Martinez, I think Martinez and Silva were managers when they took a bit of a thumping, but they're right at the end of like the, the the door was about to close on them. They're on the way out, and then that result came, and it was like see you later. But the the Anfield ties are normally quite quite tight, apart from those two two wallopins. And uh, Everton, I think, uh, are coming into a bit of form, mm -hmm. and obviously uh, going into this derby, it's one they don't want to, neither team want to lose. But it's normally tight at Anfield, so I'm going to go two one. All right, moving on to Bournemouth against Wolves. Sim has gone for 2-1 to Bournemouth. I've gone for 1-1 one, one here. What are you thinking? It's a tough one, you know, this one. Um, I'm going to have Sim's uh, result, but in reverse. I'm going to go 2-1 Wolves. Ooh, that's, so Sim's gone for a Bournemouth <laughs> win. I've gone for a draw. You've gone for a Wolves win. Um, yep. uh, when, when I'm assessing this game, I'm looking at both of these clubs coming into it. Bournemouth... I think they're yet to win a game this season, aren't they? They haven't won a single game. Yeah. I think that's probably what's gone into Sims thinking in this one. Wolves have impressed me in parts. When you look at the big games that they played, they beat Man City. They lost against Manchester United on the first day, but really should have taken more from that game. Yeah. You're looking at players like Pedro Neto, who's pro probably playing the best football of his career. Um, and he's one of the standout players in the Premier League uh, so far this season. But... I don't think the Wolves' defence maybe has been as strong as maybe it has been um, over the past couple of years. I was kind of thinking maybe a Wolves win um, on the back of not being really impressed with Bournemouth whatsoever this season. But I went for a draw just because I think Bournemouth will be a bit harder to beat because they know this is a game which, you know, they, they probably can expect or the fans expect them to get some points on the board. But I think Wolves won't make it easy for them. I think Pedro Neto will be heavily involved and I just couldn't split the side. So I went for 1-1. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going, like you said, I have been impressed with Wolves in certain games. They have done very well, especially Man City and United, the two you mentioned, where they should have easily won against United um, and certainly shouldn't have lost. We all know the reason they lost. Uh, um, and I, I, like I said, I just have not been impressed with Bournemouth one bit. They just don't look st uh, stable. They don't look as if they're going to be threatening. So uh, I fancy a Wolves win here. Do you feel like um, the Bournemouth manager, bear in mind that he's only just taken over the job, do you think that um, uh, that he's under pressure? Well, he could, I mean, he certainly could be. I mean, let's face it, Scott Parker lost his job within two games. All right, it was a 9-0. But uh, their their main aim is to uh, to stay in the Premier League again against the Premier League stability. And for every game they go without a win, 
let's face it, it'll be harder and harder for them to, to win that battle. So uh, I think he'll be under considerable pressure if he loses this game. And also, the way you got to look at it is Gary O'Neill going to his old club in Bournemouth. Didn't even think of yeah. that. And um, there you go. he's going to have a point to prove, isn't he, going back to Bournemouth? And I felt like the way he was sacked was a bit unjust, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he looked like he was getting it full time. You've got to admire the work. I think you spoke about it this week when we've done shows, the work that he's done. Yeah, we, we did when we did our next four games, didn't we? Because Wolves mm. is fourth. Um, he did a remarkable job there. He's now come to Wolves where he's had to deal with FFP um, and not had the best of windows, but he knew that when he took the job. And I think he's a very good up-and-coming coach. I um, agree. Yeah, that, that's, that, 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 that ingredient's had a bit of spice to the tie as well, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And I didn't even take that into account when I was making my prediction. I, it's a shame that this prediction's locked in because I probably would have uh, gone for the same as you in 2-1 to Wolves because I think uh, Gary O'Neill will probably go there with a point to prove. But let's move on to Brentford against Burnley. I've gone for 2-1 to Brentford. Tim's gone for 2-0 to Brentford. What are you going for? This is a, this is a tough one. Um, Brentford haven't been in the best of form this season, have they? They normally start off reasonably well. They haven't... Mm. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I'm going to one, go 1-1. One, one. One. One, I, one, I think um, the way I'm looking at it, Brentford haven't won at home this season as of yet. I think this yep. is a really good opportunity for them to come up. They're coming up against a naive Burnley side who uh, leave a lot of space at the back. Um, attack really well. I really like some of the players that Burnley have, especially Forster up front and Collie Osho on the wing. Um, I really think they're, they're good players. If Burnley do go down, I feel like they could get Premier League moves after that. Um but Brentford, you know what you're going to get with Brentford, a hard-working side. Uh, they've got quality players like Mbwemo and Whistle up top. Um, Jensen as well in the middle of the park seems to be pulling through uh, in terms of goal contributions every week. But they just can't seem to get that win o over the line at the moment. Um, I think they've lost like four out of their last five games or something silly like that where Burnley just got their first win um, two games ago, albeit they lost to Chelsea 4-1 um, after that. I think Burnley can get a goal here at the Brentford Community Stadium, but I just think the the way that Brentford set up, they're going to try catch Burnley probably on the counter and find those gaps. So I think Brentford will win, but I think Burnley will make it hard for them um, in terms of tr giving them something to think about the other way. Yeah, the way I'm looking at it is, is will Brentford still have a hangover from the way the Manchester United game finished? Um, they, they, then you look at it, like I said, their home form is normally... Very, very good. Very, very good. It just has been still waiting for their first win. And I have been impressed with the football Burnley play. Yes, they, they have been very naive about against big teams. But I think Brentford is a team Vincent Company will say, do you know what? They're not in form. We can do this. And the couple of players, was one of the players you mentioned, I can't remember his name, that kid that we saw at Burnley. Collioso, so, yeah. Yeah, he, he looks a real, 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 real talent. Um, and I can just see a draw here. I really can. All right, let's move on to a big game this weekend. Manchester City against Brighton at the City of Manchester Stadium. Me and Sim gone for the exact same scoreline here at 3-1 to Man City. What are you going for? I'm going to add an extra goal to Brighton. Ooh. I'm going to, I'm going to go 3-2. Uh, Man yeah. City need to, need to wake up. Um, and I think this will be the time they start doing it. But a very tough, tough game. Yeah. And when you look at it, I mean, Brighton, you know what you're going to get with Brighton, like really good attacking football, but very open at the back. That's essentially yep. what you're going to get with them. Uh, De Zerbi, uh drills them very well. They're a very, very, very good footballing side. But I just feel like with Man City and the return of Rodri, I think it will stand Man City in very good stead this weekend. And... Um, I think Man City got one of, if not the best defence in the Premier League. And with Rodri um, on top of that, I, I I don't see them conceding more than one goal this weekend. And I think it will be fairly comfortable for them at the end. I think maybe Brighton will have a good start and they'll um, put some pressure on Man City. But I feel like once Man City get in into their groove, they'll win this game quite comfortably, comfortably in my opinion. And uh, the Rodri thing is, is a massive, massive thing for Man City. You, all you need to do is go look at the stats when Rodri is playing, when he's not playing, uh, to the amount of games Man City win and lose. Look, the three games that Matt Rodri was out for, they lost all three, which is mind-boggling because yep. you always think with Man City, like, you take De Bruyne out, doesn't make a difference. You take Haaland out, doesn't make a difference. But Rodri, you take him out, it does make a difference. So I think he's that the one player which is an exception to that rule. 
Yeah, I mean, I, can you imagine if he hadn't been suspended? We'd probably still be talking about them being invincible. But based yeah. on those stats, um, he is a phenomenal player. He is phenomenal. But uh, I, I just see this one being probably this probably being game of the day, not just because of the score, but the football that's played, the quality mm. of it, uh, the moments in it. So yeah, I'm going for a, a three-two Man City win. All right, next up, Newcastle against Crystal Palace. Again, me and Sim have gone for the exact same score lines here. 2-0 to Newcastle. What are you going to put? Uh, Newcastle. Yeah, I, I'm going to go 4-1 Newcastle. Ooh, a big score line. I mean, I struggle... Newcastle. I struggle to see where the goals are going to come from from Crystal Palace because, first of all, Newcastle got a good defence. And second of all, Zaha has gone now. Eze is injured. Olise is injured. Where's the goals going to come from from Crystal Palace? Set pieces. Mm. Set pieces, probably. Um, as a new, Newcastle, I, as people know, I have a very big soft spot for Newcastle because of my love for Paul Gascoigne and anything Newcastle. Um, and... I just uh, at the moment they're 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 purring and I just I think they're unstoppable at the moment um, or or at least against at home to uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, look what they did to PSG and look at the blooming plethora of players they had. So yeah, a, a very convincing home win for me. Yeah, they've kept three clean sheets in their last three home games against Brentford, Man City and Burnley, uh, albeit Man City was in the cup, but yeah. it's still a home game. Um, against this Crystal Palace side, I think they are going to be keeping another clean sheet and with the attacking talent... Kieran Trippier, first and foremost, has really uh, come into this season now after a quiet start. I think five assists so far this season, which is unbelievable. And they've got a player like Alexander Isak. Doesn't even score start every game, but he seems to score every game nonetheless. Yeah. So um, Newcastle have really kind of announced themselves this season. After those three clean sheets, they also beat PSG 4-1 at home in the Champions League. So I can't see anything here but a Newcastle win. Um, and I'm going for 2-0. And so is Sim. Next up, is Nottingham Forest against Luton. Sim's gone for 1-1. I've gone for 1-0 to Forest. What are you going for? All right, I'm going to flip your score around this time. I'm going to make it, if one of you gone win and lose, uh, win and draw, I'll go for the other one. I'm going to go 1-0 Luton win. Wow. 1-0 to Luton. 1-0 I mean, Luton. You, where, go on, go on, Ben. No, speak. No, I was going to say, do you know what? What, what? what we saw against Luton when we played them last week, Yeah. if they had some better finishing they would have got something from that game. Um, if that had been... Can you imagine if we had been playing a, an Aston Villa or a Manchester City, a Newcastle, the chances that they created, mm. they would have had someone to, to put them away or at least have made Vicario work uh, harder. And as good as Nottingham Forest's home form was last season, I think there's, there's something for Luton in this game. I really do. And I'm just thinking they might just sneak it and get their second win. See, I disagree a little bit. I think that... Luton will be a bit resolute in this game. They'll defend in numbers and um, they'll be quite stubborn and for, for Nottingham Forest to break them down. But I feel Nottingham Forest will, the superior quality that Nottingham Forest have, will shine through in this game. I, I get what everyone's saying. Luton are looking a bit better than maybe they did in the first few weeks of the season. I completely agree. Um, but I just feel like Nottingham Forest do have the superior quality, especially going forward. Morgan Gibbs-White, Taiwo Awioni, uh, maybe even on the wings, um, Callum Hudson-Odoi and um, and Elanga as well. So I just feel like Nottingham Forest just got so much, much better players than Luton have in the team. And especially at home where they haven't got the results, haven't got the rub of the green in the last few weeks when they have played. 0-0 away at Palace, 1-1 at home to Brentford. 2-0 um, away at Man City I feel like this game this week is the week that they're going to get the three points on the board and probably uh, most definitely at the expense of Luton which I wouldn't say they're probably uh, yeah I would I actually would they're, they're, I think they're the worst team in the Premier League uh, this season yeah. um, when you're looking at it's between them and Burnley and Sheffield United, right, the three teams that have come up. I think Burnley have something about them where they're good going forward. They're just too naive and open at the back. So uh, it's probably against Luton and Sheffield United who has the worst quality. And it's hard to pick between the two. But I just feel like as much as they are defending a lot better in the last few games than they have been in the first few weeks, I just struggle to see where the quality is in their team. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can see where you're coming from. But I just... 
Luton need to pick up wins. We know they need to pick them up and try and get some points on the board. Um, maybe the pressure of being away from home will suit them a bit more better. Uh, they can counter-attack. We know about that. I can't remember the name of their player. They've got this one of the fastest in the league. Could exploit that. Listen, I'm a, you'll remember, Ben, I'm a huge fan of Morgan Gibbs-White. When we when we went to play Forest away last season, I was saying he's the danger. I, I think he's an absolutely outstanding player. Um, he He's always a concern. Um but I don't know why. I've just got a, a little hunch, a little feeling that the, they will be going back to Bedfordshire tomorrow with three mm-hmm. points in the bin. Well, three points in the bin, on. in the bag. In the bag. <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> let's move on to the next game, and it's the We Hate Tottenham derby. Chelsea against Arsenal. Sim's gone for 1-1. I've gone to 1-0 to Arsenal. So let me guess what you're going to go for. Yeah, I can't, I can't bring myself. To, I can't bring myself to say. It. I can't bring myself to say. It. I'm, 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 I'm going to go. The best result we could hope for is obviously the one Sim went for. Mm. Um, I think for once I am going to stick with Sim. I am going to stick with Sim, not just because that's the best. Uh, Chelsea seem to be coming into a bit of form right now and finding their way. Arsenal, obviously, got the great win against Manchester City, and it looks like they're getting the job done. But this is a mammoth fixture. Um, and obviously, you've got the extra spice of well, whether we love or hate Pochettino, whatever way you want to be with him right now, he'll know when it's Arsenal, he will still get that little bit of an adrenaline shot being this is the enemy. Um, so I'm hoping for a draw, and I think mm. it will be. I've gone for Actually, one I'll change two. it 2 2. I'll go Desmond. Oh, Same as Desmond, yeah. Yeah, Desmond. All right, fair play. I've gone for 1 0 to Arsenal because. As much as Chelsea's form is turning around and they're getting results on the board, and albeit I think they've actually been performing, I wouldn't say at the top of their game, but they've been performing not bad, uh, pretty well throughout the whole season. They just haven't seemed to put the ball in the back of the net and finish their chances. Uh, but having said that, I think they're coming up against their probably their toughest test of the season so far, albeit they did play Liverpool first game of the season. Um, but once teams have got into their rhythm, it's a bit harder to play them. So I think this is probably their hardest t- test of the season so far. And Arsenal are notoriously really good away from home and they usually do keep it really tight uh, at, away from home as as opposed to they can see goals for fun at the Emirates. So I think um, Arsenal will play their like calm, reserved and hard to beat uh, tight at the back football. But having said all that, if Saliba and Saka are out for this game, it does give Chelsea um, much more belief and hope that they can take a result or they can uh, nick a draw off Arsenal. So I think my feelings towards this game, if those players are out, do change a little bit. But I'm kind of assuming that those two do play. And if they do, I think Saliba is one of the best defenders in the Premier League. Yeah. And I think it will be 1-0 to Arsenal. I think Arsenal will just about nick it. So I've gone for 1-0. Sim's gone for 1-1. Brian's gone for a 2-2. Let's go on to Sheffield United against Manchester United, which is the eight o'clock kickoff on the Saturday. Sim's gone for 2-1 to Man United. I've gone for 2-0 to Man United. And what are you going for? 2-1 Sheffield United. (laughs) Really? Why 2-1 Sheffield United? Do you know what? Sheffield United are one of those teams in the past that when you look at it, just look what happened with us in the FA Cup last year. They're a team that somehow, some way, when the big boys come into town, they pull out a monster of a result. They pull out a monster. Listen, they were very, very unlucky against Manchester. Right, and they City. just lost eight 0 to Newcastle. Yep. So, so that, that's Newcastle. That's Newcastle. It's done. It's dusted. This is at home. They're going into a a big one. Um, and I'm. I think Ten Hag is about to get more one. I really wow. do. I think. Um, obviously, I said two 0 to Man U. I just. I don't know. I just can't see where the quality is in this Sheffield United side. Yeah, in some games they can defend uh, resolutely well, uh, like they did against Man City, like they did against Spurs. But I just feel like maybe they will do that. But Man United will still find those moments of quality and and still find those moments of joy where they can break down this Sheffield United side. And I feel like they're going to win it. Maybe not as comfortably as some people may think. But maybe a goal um, at the beginning and, and then it's a tight game for the rest of it. And then they maybe nick a goal right at the end just to seal the deal. But I don't see this being a great game, a great spectacle by any stretch of the imagination. I can just see Man United just about going and getting the job done, to be honest. That's, that's the thing. It might not be the greatest set the spectacles, but again, Sheffield United it could be another team with set pieces. We've seen Manchester United haven't really been defending with them very well. 
Casemiro is going to be out by the sounds of it. Um, for a, Not that he's been on a, any particular good run of form or anything, but that's another mid, a key midfielder out for them. Amrabat could be out as well, to be fair. So, so there we go. And it could be a game of set. Like I said, just because a game may not have always the great quality of the players, it takes one set piece. Yeah. One one decent delivery of a corner or a free kick, bang. Um, Anana still isn't really firing on all cylinders and he's got a ricket in him. And I think there's another one coming on this game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Onana. He's like channeling his inner Hugo Lloris from last season. I don't know what's going on with him. He's like a hybrid of uh, Taibi, Roy Carroll. <laughs> uh, all, 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 all those ones that they got that didn't do well all rolled into one. Um, he look, he is a great goalkeeper. Man, he's struggling. Yeah, he really is. Uh, but let's move on to the Sunday football, which only one game on Sunday, which is Aston Villa against West Ham. Sin's gone for 1-1. One, one. I've gone for 2-1 to Villa. What are you guessing? Is it? Is it sorry, it's a Villa, yeah? Yeah. 3-2 Villa. Ooh, big scoreline. 3-2. Yeah. yeah. Why 3-2? Both, both these teams have been... Very, as much as I hate to say it with one of the teams, um, they've both been playing very, very well. They've both mm. got Ollie Watkins on fire for Villa uh, amongst other players. James Ward-Prowse, who's a player I love, um, obviously he's gone to West Ham and is doing incredibly well. So and when you got James Ward- <laughs> Not anymore, yeah. But whenever you've got James <laughs> Ward-Prowse, whenever you've got James Ward-Prowse on the pitch, you know if you get a free kick... Yeah, there is every chance that this is going on target and a goal. So I could just see Aston Villa play some great football at home. They really yeah. are. And West Ham, to their credit, are doing well. I think this is going to be a very high scoring, but I'm come on the Villa. Yeah, I kind of feel like um, look, both of these teams have been very impressive this season. You can't you can't say anything but that. But I think home spot home uh, comforts will uh, prevail i think this weekend i think villa are an unbelievable home side in my opinion uh, ever since emre has taken over to be honest and um they've got better and better in my opinion and the likes of ollie watkins like you said on fire musa diaby as well uh, performing really well uh, they've just got a really tough team and a tough team to beat and i think west ham will come and try and play their game uh, whatever their game might be which is probably to stifle aston villa but I think, like you said, they will. They can probably present themselves with a few opportunities from set pieces with in, with James Ward-Prowse at the heart of things. But I, like I said, I do think that Aston Villa will prevail. If this game was at the London Stadium, I probably would have gone for the opposite scoreline. But because yeah. it's at Villa Park, I've just sided uh, slightly sided with the Aston Villa win. Uh, but on James Ward-Prowse, are you surprised that he wasn't called up to England? I, Joe, you know I, I don't understand it. I don't know. I like Gareth Southgate used to say, I'm going to pick players on form and uh, game time, not on, on names. And I was really upset when Jason Ward-Prowse didn't go to the World Cup, let alone, I mean, you can't have a player that's got that one incredible talent. And let's face it, Englishman-wise, he is the best at, uh, dead ball specialist. Mm. James Madison will be run close. But Jason Ward-Prowse is on a, another level when it comes to his free kicks and delivery. Um and people seem to think he was just, that's all he's got. But you've seen at West Ham, he's not. He, he can do the quarterback role. He can get forward and get goals. I, I, I would have him over Jordan Henderson easily. Any day easily. of the week. Any day forget of the what, week. Forget yeah. all the, the crap around Jordan Henderson. I, I'm, I'm talking on football inability now. I think James Ward-Prowse is a really underrated player and he should be in the England squad. Yeah. All right, and let's move on to the final prediction of the weekend, and it's Tottenham against Fulham. London derby at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Monday Night Football. Me and Sim have both gone for the exact same scoreline in 2-0 to Spurs. What are you going for, Brian? I'm going to up one goal. I'm going for three. I'm going for 3-0 Tottenham. Actually, I said 3-1 on my prediction, so I'll stick with it and say 3-1. 3-1. Yeah, I do think like... Um, Fulham, I haven't been that impressed with Fulham, albeit they have pulled off a few results here and there. They did get uh, a point at the Emirates as well, which was really impressive with 10 men. Um, but going into this game, I think Spurs have been very good all season, especially at home. We've won all our home games so far. But Bissouma being out, I think is going to be a big, big loss uh, for Spurs this weekend. I don't think Hoybier, as much as I rate Hoybier, and I think he is the man 
to replace uh, Bissouma in this game. I don't think he can do the exact same job that Bissouma does for us in terms of being press resistant, in terms of carrying the ball, in terms of driving us forward. He can drive us forward in terms of his passing to a certain extent, but he can't do that sheer dribbling that Bissouma does through the heart of the midfield. So I do think we lose yep. an aspect of our game this weekend without Bissouma being in the team. But... Having said that, I think we've got more than enough quality with the likes of Kulisevsky, Son, uh, whether it be Richarlison or Brennan Johnson, um, Hoybier, Madison and, and Pape Matassar, um, and everyone we have along the back line as well who's contributing to goals. So I do think we have more than enough quality to go win this game. I just don't think it would have been as convincing as if uh, Bissouma would have been there. Yeah, I, I can't really say much more than that. Um... All I, can, all I can say is with, with Fulham last season, they really did impress me. Obviously, when they came up, they started playing great football, getting the results. Listen, they got a, a draw at the field, didn't they? So, uh, fair play to them. They, they, they can mix it with the big boys. Um, but I think hopefully the Spurs players will be going out and saying, right, you played us at the beginning of the season, the Carabao Cup. That weren't this. That weren't us, sorry. Now deal with this. Yeah. And I think, I, think, I think we'll go 3 0 up and they'll get a goal. Uh, near the end, um, I can just see a consolation goal once we're, we're, we're tiring, but I expect a dominant start and uh, at least get or get the job done, keep the winning run going, and stay top of the league. All right, well, there you have it. That is our predictions. Let's move on to star men this weekend. Sim's gone for Brian and Buemo. But Brentford at home to Burnley, which is a fairly good shout, to be fair, because we both thought Brentford were going to win. And we both think that uh, there's going to be goals in the offing um, for Brentford. In terms of my star man, I have gone for Mohamed Salah at home to Everton. Um, Salah, I think, has just been incredible all season. He's also got this new kind of creator role where he's getting a lot of assists as well as goals as well. So I think he'll be central to what uh, Liverpool do this weekend in the Merseyside derby. Have you got a star man in mind? Yeah, I do. Kieran Trippier. It? Trippier? That's an interesting shout. That is Kieran an interesting shout. Because what, Newcastle at home to Palace. And I think 4-1. Um, so you're going, how many assists are you going to get? Do you think he'll get on the score sheet as well, or just assists? Free kick he could do. Free mm -hmm. kick he could do. Um, I was just watching Sun's 150 goals, and I just got to, and it just reminded me of that banger he scored against Fulham, uh, yeah. Funny enough, the Fulham, sorry, that's the video I was watching, the Fulham goals, um, and he scored that bang. So I'm going to go two and a free kick. Two, go two assists and score a free kick. Wow. Well, there you have it. That is uh, Predict the Prem. I did pick Mo Salah as well, just because I've got some making up to do in the points. So uh, who, who better than uh, to pick one of the best players in the Premier League? But no, um, that is our Predict the Prem. Let me know your score predictions and Starman in the comment section below. Let me know who you think is going to come out on top this week, me or Sim. But it's good to have the Premier League back. Enjoy your weekend and we'll see you all very soon.